Hi, I'm Sari Cohen. And I'm Jennifer Ortega. And you are watching Culturally Obsessed. On Muse TV. And we're here tonight. Where, where are we, Jen? We're at the premiere of Sugar and Toys. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's going to premiere on Fuse. Yeah, June 9th. It's, it's hosted by rapper Kyle. And it is a late night animated series. Yeah, hip hop culture theme, a little bit of social commentary. I can't wait to see what's in store. From the creators of the Boondocks, mm -hmm. which I'm a fan of. Yeah. It's going to be fun. I can't wait. What cartoons do you like? Uh, Mighty Mouse. <laughs> Why don't you introduce yourself to us? Um, I'm Carl Jones, uh, co-creator of Sugar and Toys. Uh, Brian Ash, co-creator of Sugar and Toys. Um, I'm really excited about this show. I want to hear your inspiration behind it. What, what triggered this and now? Why now? Um, well, I, I mean, our whole career, you know, we, we try to do content that speaks to what's happening right now you know um i mean from boondocks to black dynamite um you know we do a lot of social commentary a lot of satire um we deal with a lot of pop cultural issues and we take a lot of pop shots at people that you probably shouldn't talk about you know um <laughs> you know but but you know we kind of take like a like a i don't know no holes barred you know what i'm saying we cross as many lines as we have to just to keep the integrity of 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 what we want to say to the world and like so you know we, we just try to focus on being honest and 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 I think like a show like this is is necessary now because you know we, we're kind of in a time where you know there's so many rules and regulations in the way that you think and the things that you should say and you shouldn't say and there's a lot of people getting canceled and a lot of things that are happening on social media where people are kind of getting attacked and mobbed for just the way that they see things and so we like to be disruptive in that way and kind of challenge you know the popular beliefs and the popular opinions and and that's what i don't know it satisfies me as a writer yeah no that's that's great uh, <laughs> <laughs> We like to say things that aren't always in the norm, too. No, but um, <laughs> I, I am a fan of like Black Dynamite and Boondocks, and you guys have done such great work together. Where did it has always been so relevant and, and cutting edge to me? Like that's what's going on currently. Um, but where did you guys like meet first of all? Like, how did you even like start creating together? Uh, wow. Um, so it was a long time ago. We've actually been working together uh, really since uh, the dawn of the new millennium, actually. <laughs> Uh, uh, at the time, I was working for uh, Damon Dash uh, and uh, his partner Jay Z. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, so uh, Rockefeller had a film division, and we had done a couple of movies over there, and we were getting ready to do an animated series. And uh, through a common friend, I was introduced to Carl, who came on board uh, to work on this cartoon uh, that never came out but uh, was the beginning of our kind of uh, you know, creative partnership. And you know, from there, uh, we ended up migrating out here. Um, Carl ended up on Boondocks. He brought me on board to that. We ended up doing a bunch of other shows together, but uh, you know, we've always kind of shared a, a sensibility uh, for a love of animation, a uh, love of hip hop culture, a love of uh, dumb shit. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's really, it's really the 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 smart dumb motherfuckers trying to take down the dumb smart motherfuckers. The idea, I love that. the idea, yeah, I mean, and that's really what it comes down to. So that the the particulars of of what we are trying to say is important to us. But what's even more important is the ability to uh, to have a dialogue, to say uncomfortable things, to to grow. Also, like even when we look at our own content of stuff we've been involved in the viewpoints that we had at one time are very different. And one of the great things about doing a show like this with, with a network like Fuse that has its sort of own brand identity and, and deals with uh, youth culture the way that it does um, is that we get to express that and, and really show our own uh, growth of our own thinking and, and our own openness to, to a lot of kind of what's going on out there now. So, yeah. I love that you did this with 80s cartoons, particularly. So what were your favorite 80s cartoons? Oh, man. <laughs> it's going to be a long list. Yeah. <laughs> no, I like, uh, let me see, 80s uh, Flintstones. I was a big Flintstones fan because that was kind of like the first time. It was Because it was for adults, you know what I mean? And it was like, I don't know, it was something about it that made me 
feel like I was being older by watching it. Um, but then also, you know, like Incredible Hulk, you know, Thunder the Barbarian. <laughs> um, uh, I loved um, Mighty Mouse. See, that's what I was just saying. M- Mighty Mouse was like, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. But I liked a lot of anime too. Like I liked the Voltron stuff and like, you know, I don't know. Like I was, uh, I don't know. It's like I, the Jetsons, a lot of Hanna-Barbera, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah, you know, what do you do? What about you? Yeah, really the Hanna-Barbera stuff as a kid was my favorite stuff, like Herculoids, I know we always talk yeah. about, and uh, <laughs> Scooby-Doo and all, and all those yeah. things. And then, you know, on the adult side, like a lot of the, uh, being exposed at a young age to like heavy metal and like Ralph Bakshi's movies also, um, like experiencing those things by accident, like late at night. Um, so like you'd accidentally turn on HBO and suddenly see something that would just completely shock the system, but also like foster a a curiosity about like what else is out there if this is out there. And so with this show, like that's kind of, you know, really in the DNA of this show is, you know, really the the title and and the premise for it actually is something that that, that Carl kind of came with originally, which is just the notion of like what enabled Saturday morning cartoons of that era to exist. It was a selling of sugar and toys to children. And so when we think about like what is both the things that we love, but also the things that may or may not be bad for us, the sort of attraction to larger than life stuff, but things that may also have toxicity to them, that's really baked into the DNA of this show, is that there are things that we do in this show where people will ask us, are people gonna be mad? And I'm like, well, if they have a fucking conscience, they will be, because if they're they're not mad, there's something wrong with them. And like, we think being able to express that stuff, to, to bring that stuff to fruition, to create that, um, to, to makes us uncomfortable. And then, you know, to write it and then to shoot it and then to be in the edit room and go, holy shit, did we, what the fuck? You know, like that's a great experience. And I think it, it fosters a question of what is possible. Even the question of like, should we or shouldn't we is a great question. And I think the, it's only worth asking if you do it and then ask the question after the fact. Right. Like you said before, like I think it's important that we have to have these uncomfortable conversations. Yeah, I mean, yeah. otherwise, sometimes like, what's the point? <laughs> yeah, like, we have a- Speaking of uncomfortable, is somebody going to take this fucking mic? Cause I, don't, <laughs> I, don't see it. I don't like holding it, so that's why I'm like... Usually it's, they give it to the short girl. It's my job to hold the mic. I around too much. So I'm not good, good with it. it. Thank you. Well, I'm you know. <laughs> um, so is there anything you want to you wanna leave the audience now? Uh, watch Sugar and Toys. Um, what's the, when does it come on? June 9th. On the TV. On the TV. On one of them channels called Fuse, I think. Yeah, it's Fuse. It's Fuse. 11 p.m. 11 p.m. uh, Fuse. Uh, uh, Yeah, please, uh, if you find clips that you like, share them with your friends on social media as well. Uh, Part of the design of the show was that it is a show that you can cut into pieces and all the pieces. It's like an earthworm. You can cut the motherfucker to pieces (laughs) and it's going to just be alive and crawling and doing shit, and that's what this show is. It's a fucking earthworm. I remember that from science class. Have you ever cut a worm? And I just, yeah. I have seventh grade memory. Yeah, don't do that shit to a frog, though, because that motherfucker yeah, will, will die. die. He'll die. die. The earthworm's just, the only yeah. thing that it's still... Starfish, you cut up. Okay, sorry, it's getting away. <laughs> the show is also a starfish. If you're into the ocean, it is a starfish. It is an earthworm. It is not a frog. Not a frog. Not a frog. <laughs> the show is not a frog. It is not a frog. But there are frogs in it. But we can't talk about that because we're going to get sued. Thank you for joining us for the Los Angeles premiere of Sugar and Toys. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe below, and check out our other amazing videos. I said that so loud. Please check them out. Or I'll come after you.